Y'all hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Check it out y'all, I got the new Apple Watch Ultra 2 and I am so excited to get into this thing and figure out what's in here and what it does. So let me get this box open and get us all set up so y'all can see what it is too. While I do that, y'all go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I'll get this thing open, get another camera set up so y'all can see what I'm doing and I'll be right back. All right y'all, let's get into this thing. If you know anything about Apple, you know that they are minimalists in the extreme. So there's probably not gonna be a whole lot to get into in this thing, but we do have this sort of like fancy outer sleeve fit that's got this lovely picture that shows us where we want to wear our new Apple Watch. And then we have the actual gubbins. So the Apple Watch ships with a band. And you have your choice of like a couple of options of a couple of not very cute bands. So I got the Alpine Loop with the Titanium G Closure. Okay, I didn't really get it. The intern got it because he got this watch as well. And I knew I wasn't gonna wear any of the bands that came with it. So I just had him pick whichever band he wanted because I knew I was gonna get some other kind of band anyway. So that comes in the box. And then, ooh, y'all, there it is. Inside this box, let me do this first. We have, of course, we have the watch. We have the charger. And this is just a standard Apple Watch charger. But now, instead of being USB-A, which is like that normal, like the old school plug into the computer bit that we've always gotten with Apple Watches, it's the same charging head part but now the pluggy bit is USB-C which I guess Apple's gone USB-C with everything and if you're familiar with Apple watches and Apple watch chargers you'll notice that this one is I don't know if that's actual titanium but it's like silver on the back side they used to be just all white all the way around. So this one's kind of lovely. Now I don't know if this is just because it's the Ultra 2 because I don't think I've gotten a new like regular Apple Watch in a little while. But the last one that I got, the charger was just the white on both sides. So this might be just fancy because it's the fancy watch or that might be how Apple's going with the chargers for now. But as per usual, there is no plug into the wall bit. So there's the USB-C that you gotta find something to plug into. Now for the watch. Those of you that know me and have seen me elsewhere, you have heard me talk about how I would not have one of these things because of the orangeness of it. And what I was talking about was the orange around the crown and then this orange over here. But but it's the only option for this watch. And so I have a watch with orange bits. Now, y'all, this thing is huge. So there's a regular Apple watch and there is this monstrosity. It is gigantic. I have said before that on my wrist, this thing is gonna look like a bedside alarm clock and I am here for all of it. So just call me Flava Flav from now on. So like I said, I got that band for the intern because I knew I wouldn't wear, it's just not me. Like that's not my style. But what I will wear is this ridiculously pink jelly sandals looking band. Y'all look at this thing. If the watch isn't quite big enough for you, just get one of these bad boys to put it in. So let me tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my watch, set it up, figure out some stuff because I've had an Apple Watch for years. I've had multiple colors of other iterations of the Apple Watch, but y'all, this thing is new. So let me get her charged up. Let me get her in the band. Let me figure it out, wear it for a couple of days, figure out what I think, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about a couple of things. We'll talk about the Apple Watch Ultra 2, which is this new big thing. We'll talk about how it compares to other Apple Watches. And I really wanna talk about what wearables can do for your workout or your exercise game, your fitness game, sorta. So y'all chill, give me a couple days to figure this thing out and I'll be back and we'll talk about it. All right, y'all, I've had the Apple Watch Ultra for a few days. 
I've worn it around, I've played with it, and I am completely ensorcelled. Now, as I mentioned, when I took it out of the box, this thing is huge and I love it. I am here for every bit of it. So let me take it off so that we can talk about what it is. I don't really want to get into the things that it does that are like normal Apple Watch things. What I want to talk about is the comparison between this watch and sort of the normal Apple Watch and whether it's worth the up, I don't know, do you even call it an upgrade? I don't know if it's an upgrade or just like a different model. So if it's worth the additional price for the different model or not. So let's get into this. So we talked about it the other day. I showed you the watch and the band. And y'all, all of this around here is, is band, right? The band had like this case built in because, a little moment of truth, the watch has these orange bits on it. You see how there's orange around the dial and there's an orange button right here, the action button, which is new on this watch. I don't know if that's even focusing, but it's new on this watch. Other Apple watches don't have that action button, but they're orange and you can't get them in any other color. And y'all, I don't do orange, go dogs. So I got this thing to at least dull down the orange some. So that's the watch in the case. It's gigantic. And this is the Series 7, I think. Series 9 is the most recent Apple Watch to come out, but I didn't get a Series 9 because quite frankly, they didn't have any new colors that I wanted. So I didn't hit that upgrade. So this is serious trying to figure out what we're talking about. So I'm gonna talk about the Series 9 and compare the Series 9 to the Ultra 2, but the size of the Series 9 is comparable to the Series 7. So this will give you an idea of the comparable sizes of the two watches. So let's talk about some things about the Apple Watch Ultra, Ultra 2. I'm gonna say Ultra, I mean the Ultra 2. I don't have the Ultra. I haven't had the Ultra. I don't think I've ever even touched an Ultra, but the form factor of the Ultra and the Ultra 2 are the very same. There are very few differences. I think the memory capacity or the storage capacity on the Ultra 2 is bigger than the original Ultra. I think it's, this one is 64 gigs. I think that one was 32. And there are a couple of other small differences, but everything that I've heard about comparisons between the original Ultra and the Ultra 2 is that that upgrade is not worth it. So there are a couple of other things that you can do with the Ultra 2 that you can't do with the Ultra yet, but nobody says, I haven't seen anybody that has the Ultra or that even has both of them talk about it being worth an upgrade, the worth going from the Ultra to the Ultra 2. So what I wanna talk about first is the Ultra 2, and then talk about whether it's worth going from a nine to an Ultra 2, or the differences, like how to make the choice between the two. Then I really wanna talk about how wearables can affect your fitness game, cause that's really why we're here, right? One of the major differences is the action button on the side, that's that orange button that we talked about. And what that does is that gives you one click access to some of the functions of the watch. And there are some specific ones that you can set it to. This is meant to be sort of, I say extreme sports watch, I guess it's not real, I mean, it's extreme to me, but like a very sort of outdoor sports watch. So like if you're a swimmer, a diver, an, a, like an outdoor, I mean, I'm a spin biker. If you're an outdoor biker, a runner, those kind of things, there are functions in this watch that are geared towards those activities. So one of the things that the action button on the side does is turn on water lockout on your watch. So it prepares your watch for to be submerged in water. You can also ping your phone. So if your phone's lost and you don't wanna go into that command screen where you can hit to ping your, your phone, you can just ping it with that button. You can set your watch in theater mode with just a click of that button. So it'll put your watch in the mode where it won't light up or make any noise. So like if you go into a setting like a meeting or something where you might should have set your watch to silent and you didn't, or things are happening on your watch and you want them to stop immediately, you can just hit that button, go into theater mode and Bob's your uncle, everything stops. You can also set it to activate a shortcut and there are shortcuts within the phone that you can choose from. 
So those are all on that action button. Now the other two buttons on the side, the crown and then the the other, well, I don't know what the other button's called, but those are the same buttons that you have on your regular uh, Apple Watch. The digital crown, which is this dial, has haptic feedback, which it does with the updated operating system. The, this is, again, this is a Series 7, but the Series 9 will have that too. So many of those things are the same between the two watches, like those basic functionalities. Of course, the Ultra 2, or the Ultra, is much thicker. It's 14.4 millimeters thick, while the Series 7 or the Series 9 are 10.7 millimeters thick. So y'all, that's a significant difference. It's a, it's a honker of a watch. The screen size, do we even talk about this? The other watches come in 41 or 45 millimeters. This one's 49 millimeters, period, end of conversation. There are no options. It's just big. And of course the display area is bigger. We don't need to get into all that. You can see the, the difference in size of the displays. And the Ultra 2 is brighter than the original Ultra. The Ultra 2 is 3000 nits where the I'm not sure if the Series 7, but the Series 9 is 2,000 nits, and I'm pretty sure that's what the original Ultra was as well. And I don't know if you, you can tell a little bit here, I think, but I think my camera is accounting for the lighting and the light in here is a little bit wonky. But that 3,000 nits is really bright and it's a really crisp screen. There are some other specifics about the Ultra 2 that I think you would expect from a more sort of rugged sporting watch, like the GPS is supposedly better than the other watches. It's rated like water resistant, safe, whatever, to a greater depth than the others. But you would expect that because it's got like diving features to it. And I mentioned it's got 64 gigs of storage, which is nothing to me like I, I don't know that I've ever run out of storage space on an Apple Watch, but y'all, I don't store music on my watches because I don't run. If you ever see me running, you best start running too because that means something's chasing me and it's going to be coming for you too soon. But if you run and you want a watch where you can download music onto it and then listen to your music without taking your phone with you, then storage space is an issue, right? And this has 64 gigs of storage, which the Series 9 also offers 64 gigs of storage. Again, this is a seven and it's 32 gigs. I think it came with 64, but I only got 32 because again, I don't load stuff onto my watch. So it's no big deal to me not to have that much storage on a watch, but I have it now if I need it. So better GPS, brighter light, um, louder speaker, and, <laughs> This might be my absolute favorite feature that I will never need, well, that I hope to never need on a watch. This one has a siren. So if you're like out backpacking in the, I don't know, wherever, out in the wilderness looking for the Sasquatch or something, and something happens and you need to alert folks to your whereabouts without sitting there yelling, I'm over here, I'm over here for like an hour, there's an alarm on here, which I'm not gonna activate because it's fairly annoying and it gets loud pretty quickly. But that's another safety feature that this watch has that the others don't, and it's loud because the speaker's loud. So I think that's pretty cool. So things that I do actually use on Apple Watches, y'all, one of my absolute favorite features of all time is of course the fitness rings. And I say that like everybody knows what I'm talking about. And if you do know what I'm talking about, just sit back and enjoy the ride for a second because I wanna talk about that feature of the Apple Watch and how I feel like it can help you up your fitness game, how it's definitely at least encouraged me to up my fitness game or be more consistent with my fitness game. So your Apple Watch, you can see that the face that I've chosen has the rings in the middle. And there are three fitness rings and the goal is to close your fitness rings every day. So there are my rings. And the red ring is the calories that you burn. Now y'all don't judge me. I just leave it set on whatever it is for my size and my height and my age and weight and all those things. So the red is your calories. So the green is your exercise minutes. And the, I think the default is 30. So I just leave it set at that. 
but it wants you to work out and it, I think you have to get your heart rate up to a certain level for that many minutes a day. So minus 30, so then it just gives you how many ever minutes out of 30 you do a day. And then the blue is your, they call it your stand ring, but what it actually is, is you're supposed to be active for one minute an hour for how many ever hours it is a day. So I think the standard is 12 and you can change that. You can make it fewer or more, but just standing doesn't do it, y'all. You can't just stand up and like stand there for a minute and be like, okay, done, check me off. You have to actually move around and do something for a minute, which is good if you get it in your head that you want to close all of your rings, it reminds you and your watch will tap you on the wrist or vibrate or do something at 10 minutes to the hour if you haven't moved for that hour to remind you that you need to get that minute in. And I think that's good if you have like a sedentary lifestyle or really a sedentary job, it reminds you to get up and move a little bit. So maybe like get up and walk around and get a, get a drink of water or something, but don't sit at your desk for eight hours a day other than the hour that you get to get up and go to lunch. It encourages you to get up and move around if you do it, right? All of this is, is predicated on a buy-in, right? The thing needs a buy-in from you because it's a token economy. And we've talked about, I'm gonna put my watch back on now because um, <laughs> I'm a little neurotic and I don't like not having it on. But I love a token economy because I love earning tokens, y'all. Rings work for me even though, well, now other people see them because we can talk about that. I'm, I'm like a squirrel talking about this because I'm so excited. But you can share your activity progress with your friends. So I have a group of friends with whom I share my activity progress and I see theirs. So like if I see my friend Gayla close her rings, I send her a high five. Or <laughs> I've told y'all about this. When Gayla's daughter, who is my niece Kaylee, sees me work like whenever you finish a workout, it'll alert your friends that you finished a workout. Well, Kaylee will text me in the middle of the day, D -d -d stop blowing up my watch. <laughs> quit working out. You're blowing up my watch. But which is her way of saying, hi, Aunt Danielle. I love you. Good job with your workouts. She's a teenager. They have their own language. But I think it's a great way. For me, it's a great way to be in community with people that I'm far, far, far away from that I don't work out with, but for us to sort of be in this workout community together. So it's a great way to encourage each other. And again, for me, I am completely bought in and sold out on token economies. So I close my rings every day. I've <laughs> I'm about to hit 2000 days of closing my, I think it's my um, the calories ring and they are not consecutive days because one day I had the stomach flu. So I didn't close all my rings that one day. So it'll take me 2001 days to close all of my rings 2000 times. But again, what I was going to say before I interrupted myself was that other people see my rings because I've chosen to be part of this small community of my friends. But if you don't do that, nobody sees your rings. So if you want to share it with people, you can. And if you don't want to share it with people, then don't. But the point is for you to see it and for you to know that you're achieving those things, that you're closing those rings. And if you've never done it before, I think you'd be surprised at how encouraging it is to see those little rings closing or getting closer and closer to closing as the day goes on. And you know what? If you have to start with, instead of 30 minutes of workout a day, if you have to start with 15 minutes and just do that and close that ring for a while and then up it to 20 and up it to 25 or whatever it is, then do that and close your rings. And as you close your rings more and more, you can increase the amount of time it takes you to close your rings or just leave it at 15 and watch your numerator increase, right? If your denominator stays 15, so it takes you 15 minutes to close that ring, but you're working out for 20 minutes a day, then you'll close the ring and it'll go a little bit further. And you'll see it go a little bit further and further as you make more and more progress. And I think you'd be surprised at how much you end up upping your fitness game just from that encouragement of those, whatever that visual representation is. Like, 
We've talked about this before. Y'all, I love a good virtual, like virtual marathon, or I don't do, you actually have done marathons, but um, any kind of virtual challenge, like my friends and I, and the intern and I have done a few of these on the Conqueror Challenge website, and you win these ridiculous medals, and y'all, it costs money. And I totally understand that I'm just buying the medal, but what it is, you go on the website and you pay to participate in this virtual race. And you can use different ways to sort of measure your progress. Like I just link it to my Apple Watch. So then when I ride the bike every day or go up and down stairs or walk around, the intern walks a lot at work. So he and I will be on a team. He walks three or four miles a day. I ride the bike a lot. So we get those miles, we get his miles and the app will track your miles as you go. And then at the end, once you've gone all the miles, they send you these ridiculous medals and I love them. And I have them laying all over the house and it kind of aggravates the intern that they're laying all over the house, but he actually kind of likes it too. Cause he knows that some of those are, he's got his hanging in his office. I should show y'all. Um, so like we joke about them being cheesy, but they encourage us to do those things and we do them together. So that's kind of cool. So whatever token economy you can get yourself into that will encourage you to work along your fitness routine, do it y'all. It, just try one. And I think you'd be surprised at how much it helps. And back to the fitness trackers, most of those you can link in like an Apple Watch or a Garmin or whatever your fitness tracker is. You can use that to track your progress. Now on Weight Watchers, on the Weight Watchers app on the phone, it asks you what kind of fitness tracker you use. So you can link your Weight Watchers app and I'm sure that other like lifestyle or fitness apps or whatever they are, I'm sure that they do the same thing, but I have my Weight Watchers app linked to my Apple Fitness, which is linked to my Apple Watch. So it tracks like all of my steps, whatever I do, and it gives me points for that. So I've said before that I don't like count my rides and stuff to get activity points, but the Weight Watchers app will get my activity from the Apple Fitness Tracker app and it'll give me points. Now, I don't get points for like all of the rides that I do because it, I mean, it's not like tracking my feet going on the pedals, it's just tracking my movement, like the movement of my wrist. And that's something to be aware of too. When you're using a wearable to track your fitness, depending on what you're doing, they can be more or less effective, efficient, depending on what you're doing. So, and y'all, this is like Captain Obvious, but like if you're riding a bike, right? Well, your wrist isn't moving very much. So the accuracy is much lower than like if you're running, right? Because if you're running, then you're, you're getting jarred or even taking steps. When you're walking, the, I don't know if it's the accelerometer or the, gyra thing that's in the watch, whatever it is that's monitoring your movement can feel that in your steps. So steps are much more accurate than like riding a bike. And let me just tell you, when you go to the grocery store, when you're holding onto the cart, it's not getting your steps so much because your hand is on the cart. So just be aware if you're trying to get steps in at the grocery store, they're probably not all that accurate. Calories on one of these the calorie counts aren't all that accurate either as far as like the calories that you burn and sleep data tends to be off just because again, it's the accelerometer and those movement things in the watch that the fitness apps depend on to monitor like your fitness and your movement and stuff. And it just, it doesn't work so well when you're sleeping. Also, if you have bony little wrists, you might need to push it up a little bit because it needs better contact with your skin and like fleshy bits to get better contact. And when it makes good contact, it tends to be good at monitoring things like heart rate, your blood oxygen. Now, the Apple Watches will do all of those things and it 100% tells you that it does not detect heart attacks, but 
I know that Apple is involved in a lot of health data tracking and collection, and I believe it's pretty accurate. So I'm not saying that it will track a heart attack or that it'll detect a heart attack, but I think as far as home tracking of like your health metrics and things, I think it's as good as any, and you can use it to better track and better plan your workouts, your fitness routines, get some insights into your health, and to make good decisions and plans on those things moving forward. All right, y'all, I think that's it. I hope that something that I said made sense. If you have questions, please ask, because I love, I absolutely love this watch, and the Apple Watch has been just fundamental to me in my fitness tracking. And honestly, like I've worked out for years and years and years, long before I got any kind of like wearable fitness tracker, but I will say this, and then I'm gonna stop yapping about it. I wasn't as consistent with my workouts and I wasn't nearly as consistent about tracking my workouts, like how I worked out, how much I worked out before I started wearing trackers as I have been since. So I can absolutely say that even though I had a fitness game before, my fitness game definitely improved and increased once I started wearing fitness trackers and definitely since I got an Apple Watch. So that's it, y'all let me get off my soapbox. Speaking of fitness, I am sore, I am tight, so I am gonna go, I'm not gonna work out anymore today, but I'm gonna go do some yoga. So let's go do some yoga, and you might be able to hear my oven keep sort of cycling because I've got a pot of chili in there stewing. So let me go work out, and then we're gonna go try that chili. I made some chicken chili. So I'm gonna work out, we're gonna try that chili, and I might, might make something else. So y'all go do something stretchy, I'm gonna do something stretchy, and I'll meet you in the kitchen in a little while. My workout is done y'all and the chili is out of the oven, but I realized, I don't think I told y'all my conclusions about which watch is which and which one's better and if it's worth the additional price for the ultra over the regular. Honestly, I don't know what I told you because I was so excited to talk about them and about how much I love the Ultra 2 and about how much it's changed my fitness game wearing a trackable that I got all off track. Y'all, I had points, I had a whole thing worked out forgot all about it, so I'm not gonna drag us all back into that. I'm just gonna say this. I have loved every single Apple Watch I've ever had. I've had Apple Watches all the way back. I think I had the first one. Maybe it was the second iteration of the first one, but I've always had Apple Watches. I've always loved them. I don't think I've ever been unhappy with an Apple Watch except one, and I think it was my first watch, like years into it, after I had like two or three other watches, the back popped off of that watch. So I sent it to my friend Alex to fix. He's like, oh, I can fix that. Well, he went to fix it. He's like, uh, hello? The back didn't just pop off, your battery swelled. So I wore that watch to the point that the battery like got all swole up and essentially I just wore it slap out. So I have never been unhappy with an Apple Watch. Now there have been times that they've had updates and like the battery life has not been good or something, but overall I've always loved Apple Watches. Speaking of battery life, the battery life on this thing, it's like a day and a half. Now I charge it every night still, but supposedly it'll go like two days on standby and like a day and a half using it a lot like I do. Not getting back into that. Here are my thoughts on the, well, the seven that I have or the nine versus the Apple Watch Ultra 2. If you want those ultra features, like to be able to go, I don't know, hiking in the mountains and have a topographical map 
of where you are and have yourself on that map on your watch, this is the one for you. There are features on this watch that the others don't have, and if you want those features, this is the watch for you. If you want a big old Flava Flav watch that's like bigger than your head, this is the one. That's what I wanted. I got it. I absolutely love it. But just as a plain old like Apple Watch to do your fitness tracking, to be able to answer your phone and read messages, this is $300 more than the Series 9. $300, not $300, $300 more. Y'all, that's a big old chunk of change. So if it's worth it to you, please, by all means, get the Ultra 2. But other than those few sort of extremish features that the Ultra 2 has, I don't really see it as being better than the Series 9. I love it. I'm not sorry that I have it, but it was that mine was a gift. Do I think that I would have spent almost $900 of my money on it? I mean, the Ultra came out a year ago and I never got that one. So I don't think I would have bought this one with my own dollars, but it was a gift. I'm thrilled to have it. I love it. I wear it all the time. So those are my thoughts on it. Now, done with all that. Again, let me know in the chat what questions you have and I will do my best to answer them. And now let's talk white chicken chili. So uh, here's what I did. Of course, I started with the chicken in the oven like we do. Y'all, I used a bunch of chicken. I used almost four pounds of chicken. Threw it in a big old pot with an onion. Put it in a 250 degree oven for about an hour and a half. Took it out, shredded it, threw it back in the pot. Threw in two cans of cannellini beans two cans of great white northern beans, two cans of diced mild chilies, about a teaspoon of granulated garlic, about two teaspoons of cumin. I was aiming for two teaspoons of cumin, but it was the bottom of the thing, so I just dumped it all in there. Some garlic, threw in some corn, cause y'all know I like corn and stuff, threw in a diced onion, mixed it up, stuck it back in that 250 degree oven for about three hours. And y'all, we have chili, so let's give it a taste. Oh, I let it cool for a little while, but it's still really hot. That's really good. It's very tasty. Got a lot of cumin in it, don't know why. But it's really good. I was tempted to throw something in to give it a little pop of color, I had to keep reminding myself that it's white chili. It's not supposed to have a pop of color. But yeah, that's exceptionally good. Now, normally I would have put in ground turkey, but I think the intern might actually eat some of that, and y'all know how he gets with ground turkey. So I just went with the chicken, and I told you we might make something else. I don't know how these turned out, so I just made them. I didn't, like, have us make them together. I made some of that two-ingredient dough. I'm going to hold this up and try not to drop it. I made some of that two ingredient dough and then kind of like shaped it into breadsticks and just stuck it in the air fryer at 350 for, I don't know, maybe seven-ish minutes just until they turned brown. So I put cheddar cheese in some of them to try to make them like a knockoff Cheddar Bay biscuit or something. And then I put anything but the bagel on some of them and some of them I just left plain. So let's give it a try and see what we got. If they're any good, we'll make them together one time. But I thought we'd just try them and just see. I like the consistency. This is the one with the cheddar in it. And the cheddar's not giving me enough taste. So I'm going to try the anything but the bagel because y'all know that's all kinds of taste on that one. What I'm thinking is I want something to serve with the chili, but I don't want to make like cornbread or God knows I don't want to make those cheddar bay biscuits because that's all the calories. And this chili has zero points. So, mm -hmm. that's the one. That's good. So I'm going to make some more of those right before I serve. I think if they're, so these aren't hot because they've been out of the air fryer for a little while. But I think if I serve them hot, they'll still be a little bit crisp. And y'all, that's that two ingredient dough. It's equal parts plain non-fat Greek yogurt and self-rising flour. 
So I just made a quarter of a cup and it made like that many. So however much dough you wanna make, just do equal parts, self-rising flour, plain non-fat Greek yogurt, mix it up, and then whatever you want to flavor it. Remember, that's how we made those funnel cakes that were so good. So anyway, that's that, that's dinner. So I'm gonna go chill out with the furry felons and read a book for a little while before the intern comes home. Y'all, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, we are most definitely friends. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I upload food and fitness videos at the beginning of every week with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.